please follow me in the call to worship. Come in the bulletins. Christ is risen.
thank you for coming here. Wow. Fellowship with sisters and brothers in Christ on this glorious resurrection morning. Now, there must be some joys, some sorrows. Somebody joyful that we have many members this morning. <coughs> I want to welcome all those who are not usually here, but here in spirit. Anyone wants to say anything? Any of you? Want to introduce yourselves? Well, I think most of the people here recognize Gabe and my wife and I have been here before. And we have some other extended family here. We're just glad to be here on the beach today. Thank you.
He so desired to be in revelation and relationship with us that you set a plan in motion that would require the death of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Well, that was last Friday. Today, it's Sunday. It's Resurrection Day, and we, we are triumphing the victory of Jesus Christ over sin and death. New life, resurrection, as you raise Jesus Christ from the dead. We thank you, God, and we look forward to the day we see him face to face. And all will be restored as in the garden. Paradise lost will become paradise restored. Our hearts are full of hope and anticipation. Father, we just give you thanks and praise for this sanctuary. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us and be able to restore the sanctuary to where it is today, this beautiful place of worship. We thank you for all these people you have brought here today. We ask a special blessing on each and every one and their families and their communities and their friends and those among whom they work and dwell and move and have their beings. Father, you ask that you would bless each and every person in our communities. We ask that you bless those who work for the betterment of our communities, the police and sheriff and teachers and doctors and caregivers. Be with each and every one of us, Lord. Bless those who govern us. Help them to know that Jesus Christ is the one and the only risen, true Savior and Governor of all. Keep us in your perfect will. This we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She says, Well, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Saying this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus came to her. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father, and to your Father, and to my God, and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and said to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things. To her. This is the Word of God. Thanks be to God. Now, may the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Thank you very much once again to the youth. Uh, today I want to direct your attention to having more hope than we can handle. More hope than we can handle. Today is Easter Sunday. And in the old days, the uh, Christians, the early Christians, greeted each other. And when they saw each other, say, passing on the road, the first one would say, The Lord is risen. Now what would the others say? The Lord is risen indeed. Now, how often do we open our eyes to see the risen Lord in our lives? Mary and the disciples only saw signs. They were told about this. But it was hard to believe it in those days that someone would be crucified, brutally beaten, crucified, dead and buried and would come back to life again. They were expecting early that first Easter Sunday morning to go to this tomb and, and see this body of Jesus Christ lying there, a dead body. But what happened? The body was not there. They saw the linen cloths that he was in. It was as if his body exploded out of the linen cloths and came alive. A living Savior. Maybe this Easter may be the opportunity for us to really be like Mary and the disciples and experience this living Savior in our lives, in our midst, today and every day for the rest of our lives. The Eureka Springs, Arkansas is the home of the great passion play of the Ozark. I don't know if anyone has ever seen that. Yes, someone has. The Great Passion Play of the Ozarks, Eureka Springs in Arkansas. They put on this play every so often, maybe every year. And one year, this uh, actor was, was taking the cross and stumbling up the hill, God got her to go be crucified. And this spectator, who obviously an atheist of some sort, started jeering this guy. So he, he threw it across the aisle, rushed over and punched the spectator. Bam! Picked up the cross and he stumbled up and he got crucified again. And at the end of the play, the director said, Now look, you know, Jesus would never have done that. Jesus doesn't react that way. So please don't do that again. He said, No, I wouldn't do it again. He said, Besides, he wouldn't be mad. 
So the next night he's going up there, stumbling with the cross once again, and spectators started heckling him again to drop the cross and punch him. So the director said, well, look, definitely, we're going to have to get another actor for this part. You're not acting the part of Jesus. So he said, no, really, I need this job. I've got to have this job. So he says, okay, one more time. So he went up the cross, and the third night, he's taking the cross out, and the guy started heckling again, and he was clenching his fist and grinding his teeth. Eventually he said, you wait till after the resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that first Sunday morning, the uh, women went, and they were going to carry out a human burial tradition, putting spices on the body. However, they found themselves witnessing a divine tradition of God bringing life out of darkness. God bringing life out of death. Some of you may have been here a few weeks ago when we spoke about the Battle of Dry Bones. And for those who weren't here, the uh, Babylonians invaded and uh, they would bring a set of the Jews up to the top of the, the mountain there and I like them and they would fall into the valley and they bring another set up and they'll annihilate them and they'll fall into the valley. Eventually they filled up the valley with all of these corpses. And of course the vultures took the flesh away and there were this all these dry bones were left. And the prophet Ezekiel came up and the Lord said, Mortal can these bones live? And he said, Lord, you know. And as those of you who were here, you know, the bones were given flesh and sinews and spirits, and they came back to life again. We are sort of working up to today. And then last week, Jesus Christ came, and, and just on the way in, he got stopped and resurrected Lazarus from the tomb. And then the, the leaders, the religious leaders, says, we have got to get rid of this guy. I mean, if he can bring life back to someone who was dead and buried for four days, everybody would believe in him, as opposed to believing in us. So God has a way of bringing life out of death. And after he came back, he appeared to his disciples. Time after time, at one stage he appeared to 500 of his disciples. And somehow, I don't know why they were getting the message that he was coming back again. For in John 14, 19, he said, A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. Now, what did he mean by the world? He meant those who were not his disciples, those who did not believe, those who did not call on the name of Jesus Christ for their redemption. Says the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. Now they didn't quite get it, and you know, you can't blame him for that. He says in John 16 16, in a little while, and you will not see me. This was a, a, a quote looking forward to Good Friday when he would be crucified and he would be put away in a dark tomb. It says, and again, a little while, you will see me. That is appointing to today the resurrection. Because I go to the Father. Then he says, therefore, now you have sorrow. That's again the Friday. But I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will be able to take from you. Well, the story is told of a, a Russian by the name of Nikolai Ivanovich Bukharin. Uh, those of you who are familiar with some Russian history would know who he is. He was a great uh, Russian communist who uh, became the, the uh, editor of Pravda. And you know Pravda is the Russian paper, the big one, and it's uh, like the Wall Street Journal. Pravda really means truth. Just imagine reading truth in Russia.
Moscow to Kiev to the great assembly of all these communists, and he was going to preach to them about atheism. Tell them how great atheism was, and he greatly attacked Jesus Christ, and he attacked everything you could imagine about Christianity. And he did this for an hour in front of this huge assembly of these communists. And when he was finished, he said, are there any questions? There was dead silence. Eventually a man got up and he went to the podium. And he said, the Lord is risen. And the whole assembly rose up and said, the Lord is risen indeed. Now that was the greeting, that is the greeting that Russian Orthodox Christians give each other even to this day. In the good old days, when the church was first formed and began, that's the way Christians greeted each other. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Today, church, we can greet each other with these same sayings. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. My friends, Christ is alive. He has risen indeed. He has risen from the dead. Hallelujah. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. And for those of you who are familiar with uh, George Frederick Handel, Handel, you know he wrote with that to music, I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. Now, George Frederick Handel lived at 25 Brook Street, Mayfair, London. The place is still there. And right next door to the left of it is number 23, Brook Street, Mayfair, London. And the person who lived there, Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> Two young musicians who died or called home to their eternal destiny at young ages. Well, someone once shouted to Dr. Billy Graham, God is dead, God is dead. And Dr. Billy Graham, of course, being gracious, he always is, he's always gracious, turned to the person and said, wow, what a surprise. I just spoke to him a few minutes ago. <laughs> well, my friends, God is alive. Jesus Christ is risen, and He is risen indeed. My friends, every time I, I stumble and I fall, I know He's there to pick me up. You ask me how I know He lives, I know He lives because He lives within my heart. And some of us may be going through a very rough period of time. This, these times are not easy. We we're going through a an uh, economic downturn, and it may have been affecting some of us. Think of imagine, imagine someone being told, I'm sorry, uh, you can't afford you anymore. You have to go, and you wonder, well, how am I going to make it? But you know as a Christian that you have a risen Savior who is there to help you through. Someone may have just been told by a doctor the bad news. And you wonder, well, I wonder what's going to happen. But you know, whatever happens, you don't know what the future holds, but you know someone who holds the future. My friends, every time I've stumbled, uh, the book of Proverbs tells me that the righteous person stumbles, and every time he stumbles, someone is there to pick him up. I assure you that someone is none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior. Now for those who do not believe, I want to turn to the book of Acts, and I want to read chapter 10, I want to read a few verses for you. I want to read from verse 38, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power. How he went about doing good and in particular curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil. 
for God was with Jesus Christ. And we are, I and their witnesses of everything that he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. And yet, they put him out of the way, murdered him by hanging him on a tree. But God, you see that every so often, but God, but God raised him to life on the third day and caused him to be manifest, that's to be plainly seen. Not by all the people, but to us who were chosen, designated beforehand by God as witnesses, who are who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he charged us to preach to the people and to bear solemn testimony that he is the God appointed and God or God ordained judge of the living and the dead. My friends, one day Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth. And he's coming back, as Acts just told us, God, God ordained judge of the living and the dead. I trust that each and every one of us here has received Jesus Christ by faith. And when we are judged, he will say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. However, for those who reject him, he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. My friends, it's not worth the gamble not to receive Jesus Christ by faith. He's coming back, and he's coming back again as the judge of all people. Now, I'd like to read Acts 17, uh, which really says about the same thing. God is coming back as the judge. My friends, believe and receive that Jesus Christ, who is God, came to earth as a human being. He suffered and he died. He was buried and God raised him from the dead. The angel said to the women, Fear not. You're looking for the dead. Jesus Christ is not here. He is risen. And because he's risen, that has given us more hope than we can ever hope for. He's given us more hope than we can ever handle. So that when any one of our loved ones dies and is put in a coffin or casket and put in the grave, we know that our loved one is not there. He or she is with the Lord. And when our time comes, we have the hope of the resurrection, knowing that we too will be with Jesus Christ. My friends, we have more hope than we can possibly end. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the doing of God's eternal word. Uh, please stand with me and repeat him. 881. 881, which is the Apostles' Creed.
determined being that there was three